be alive. Right. Hello, everyone. This is AC, or this is Clarice Angafor. And um, the name of our show has changed from the Sangli Show to the Voice of Hope Show with Clarice Angafor, which is still with AC, myself. And today is the first um, edition of August of Let's Give It a Voice here at the Voice of Hope show. So on this show, we aim to educate, we aim to empower, to inspire, to give hope to those who have faced issues or those who have faced challenges most often deemed, um, deemed too emotional, too insensitive, or those issues which some people think they have to be swept under the carpet and they don't feel comfortable talking about them for various reasons, which sometimes they are personal, sometimes it's the, it's the society. So today is the last episode of a four part series on men's health. If you've been following this show, if you've been following this edition of Let's Give the Voice since June, we, we've been talking about men and health. Right. And focus has been on the body, the mind and the soul. Then over the over the this month we've talked about depression and suicide in men, which we looked at the causes, the reasons, the prevention measures, and coping mechanisms. On our second episode, focus was on fatherhood and relationship, which we looked at the effects of a father's presence or his absence in his children. And then the third episode was centered on men and anger. Note was taken that because we are talking about men and anger, it doesn't only mean that, it doesn't mean that only men get angry, but because during this month, we've been talking about men issues, some of those issues, which sometimes men don't really feel comfortable thinking about them. So, so men and anger was actually one of them. And so we looked at the effects on their mental health and those around them, because if a man is happy in the home, the rest of the home is happy. So today we have our fourth episode and we are going to give a voice to men and the prostate problems. We are going to look at the causes, we're going to look at the signs, the symptoms, management, prevention measures, so as to be able to lead a healthy life. It is worth not noting that the reason we put up this four part episode, episode was in a bit to raise awareness to educate, to empower, and to inspire men to be able to talk freely and comfort comfortably about those issues that are important to them and their health. Most often, our men, our boys, our fathers, they shut down. They don't want to talk for personal reasons, maybe because of the man ego, or maybe be, be, because of the society We look up to the man a lot. We expect them to be strong for every other person, but it doesn't mean that they do not have issues. It doesn't mean right. that our men do not have problems to talk about. So creating an avenue, creating a platform of this nature where they can feel comfortable, they can feel free to open up, to talk about some of the issues which worry them. It's really, really going to go a long way and it will also, inspire and it will empower others and give hope to every other man out there and us the mothers the women the girls we rally behind you to help you so that we should be able to voice out so should be able to give a voice to these issues because what i know is that what we give a voice to has the power to change our lives it also has the power to heal us and also to heal others we all know that there are men who are dying in silence. And we have to know that there's power in that voice if we give it. So today on the show, we have uh, three guests. We have Lesi Nayo of the Lesi Nay Talks. We have our famous Dr. Ako, the, the artist. <laughs> we have Fang Roland all the way from Bahrain. Lacey is here in the UK with me, and Dr. Ako is from the US. And welcome, everyone. So before we continue, I would like each and every one of you to 
to give an introduction about yourself, what you do, what you're passionate about, and why are you particularly passionate about this this topic, men and the prostate problems. I'll start with Lacey. You're welcome once more, please. Thank you so much for inviting me for the program. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. My name is Lacey and I do a program on Facebook. The name of the program is Let's Talk Health and Wellbeing and I host it as Lacey Nate Talks. So I've been hosting different programs on Facebook and I'm a staff nurse with a master's in public health. So I do, do a lot of health promotion and health awareness on different issues as well. But I was particularly drawn to cancer, in particular breast cancer, before I broadened into different types of cancer because my mom had breast cancer and she passed away due to breast cancer. So that was my inspiration. That was my motivation to go into oncology as a nurse and to start raising awareness on breast cancer. And as the need arose, as people began to ask a lot of questions, I had to develop an interest in prostate cancer because of obvious reasons and cervical cancer as well. So I'm passionate about cancer, passionate about raising awareness, I'm passionate about educating people because as we all know, cancer is not a death sentence, but um, early detection is key. So you'll get to know more Thank as you. we go into the program. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more as we go in. I know when you're passionate about a particular topic, yeah, and every, each and every one of us, you can talk whenever you, you, you're given the chance. So let's go over to Mr. Fan. You're welcome once more. Hi, Roland. Thank you. Uh, yes, Madam Angafo, thank you for having me in your program. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, wonderful program. First of all, my name is Fang Roland. I am, uh, anyway, my, I actually, I did laboratory technologist, then later I switched to nursing. I worked in Cameroon for so many years. Then I find myself here in Bahrain. And when I got to Bahrain, I had to switch to anesthesia. Where presently where I'm working in American Mission Hospital, I'm under anesthesia. And I'm the manager of the entire operating theater of uh, American Mission Hospital with uh, 25 staffs, doctors, nurses, technicians, and all the like under me. Well, talking about this topic, um, I remember when you mentioned this topic to me some weeks back or a month ago. After you had mentioned other topics, which I actually wasn't that interested, but when you mentioned about this prostate uh, plant stuff, I said, no, this, this, uh, this is a topic for men, and I'm a man. I don't know how tomorrow, tomorrow might be. I might fall a victim of it. Who knows? I said, no, it's better I discuss about it and make my brother out there to be aware about it because critically if you look into it, some men are so scared and don't even want to listen about this uh, prostate gland and all the like. So uh, because I'm a man, I know this fall under us men. I said, no, I will, I will be part of this program. I will also educate my friends out there and I also learn from others. So that's why I accepted to be part of your program. And I'm, I believe that at the end of this program, our viewers will get something back home and we ourselves on the program will also get something back home. So I'm happy to be part of it. And I hope I'll be able to give my best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roland. Over to you, Dr. Ako. I know you are a famous face on our show, and welcome. But we still need an introduction from you. <laughs> yes, uh, hello. Uh, uh, how are you doing, AC? Um, it's amazing the new, you know, the name of the of the show. Um, very powerful. Um, hello to Lacy to Roland. It's great to have you on the show. I am Ako um, Tabeta, Dr. Ako Tabeta, um, a medical doctor by training and profession and an artist by choice and and by talent, of course. And I'm privileged to be here today. I I heard Lacy talk about um, cancer. I work at Georgetown University Hospital um, where I did some cancer research in partnership with the Lombardi Cancer Center before I move to the field of mental health and uh, cancer is such a is such a huge field and I'm privileged to be part of you know of this panel today um, which is going to like um, expound on the knowledge attitude and practice of, of cancer pertaining to prostate cancer um, 
I let I train staff in mental health, clinical interventions, medication management, uh, co-occurring disorders at MBI Health Services. Um, I also facilitate group therapeutic sessions, and and I do a, a few other things, consultancy in the area of uh, mental health, which is a very huge um, area, especially with during this um, COVID nineteen um, era. I want to say that um, this show is such a huge show, and this is uh, the last of the four part series, and it has been very. I've had a lot of people call me and talk to me about how much they were impacted by the show. So that is a big one to you, uh, Clarice AC, for what you're doing out there, informing men and women and making a decision, you know, to ensure that certain um, core topics uh, are relevant uh, during our time. So thank you for having me on your show once again. You're welcome. Thank you so much for, for that and, and the feedback, Dr. Akko. So prostate problems are in many ways still a taboo subject, which is very strange because there's a, um, Actually, there, there's, a, there's a cure, there's a treatment for it. I mean, early detec detection is really key. But I do think that there's no perfect time than this for us to, to, to get a conversation around the prostate problems. I know one of my, one of my Facebook friends, had, um, he's very passionate about what I do, about what we, we do. And he actually contacted me and he mentioned that so many men are going through this issue with the prostate problem, but most of them are quiet and are silent about it. So probably at the end of this show, mentality will be changed. People will learn and unlearn, and people will know exactly what to look out for if there's a problem, and, and to know that there's a cure, and it's not a curse or it's not a taboo to have such a problem. And a problem once shared, as they always say, a problem once shared is, is half solved, especially if you talk to the right person. So now let's get into our show completely now with our question. So what exactly is the prostate gland? I know most men may have an idea, but as for us women, we may not completely know exactly what to look out for because we, we can also help you guys. So, Dr. Ako, I would like to start with you. What exactly is the prostate gland and its functions and the uses? Okay. I always like to break down things in a very simple way. Um, I'll try to um, dodge away from all the terminologies because I'm very much aware that this is not a lecture in medical school, but mm -hmm. that our audience, our broad audience, want to understand what we're talking about. So. Yes. I will start by saying that, you know, in, in men, there are certain hormones, and in female, there are certain hormones, all right? And in male, we have certain male hormones we call androgens. And there are androgens which produce this gland called the prostate gland in male. So we'll start with that. Maybe that will explain why we don't have prostate gland in females. The prostate gland in females, these androgens, male hormones, produce and maintain this gland. So... What is a prostate gland? A prostate gland is a walnut shape, a walnut shape, you know, um, organ found in men only. All right. Uh, so, you know, when a daughter asks, Do I have a prostate gland? No, you don't have a prostate gland. Little girl, you will never have one. So, the man, has, the boy has it, it's going to become a man. And as he gets older, that's when that gland really comes relevance, you know. Uh, when I talk about relevance, I mean to therapeutic, you know, to clinical relevance. Okay, um, it's a walnut shaped organ which is found behind the bladder, um, between and it's found between the penis and the rectum. I'm calling names like bladder, penis, rectum, they all play, they're very interconnected, and that is where we have all the issues symptomatology, the things that you feel when there's something wrong with your prostate gland. And this gland, um, I want to talk about the pathway, the urethra, the, the urethra runs, the urethra runs from, from the bladder to the center of the prostate to the penis. And we're going to have the movement of semen and, you know, urine. We're talking about the bladder, the center of the prostate, the penis. All these organs are, you know, going to be having all these um, things we're talking about. So it's a very important gland in men. You know, uh, it's important in the production of 
seminal fluid, which uh, helps to maintain the sperms and everything. It also produces a prostate-specific antigen, which is a very important, you know, um, antigen in the body, which helps detect if there's something that is wrong with the prostate gland. You can um, quantify it and determine it in blood, you know, samples when you're trying to detect what is wrong, something. So it's specific to the prostate, all right? And that, that is in, 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 in very, um, you know, in a nutshell, what the posted line is. Okay, thank you so much for that. So, we, we are going to, our main topic today once more is men and the prostate problem. And the prostate problem is not just one, there are quite a few. When I talked with Lacey, she mentioned that there are quite a few prostate problems. So we are learning today and we are also going to unlearn. If you're just joining in, you are on the Voice of Hope show with Harris Anderson, the host. And we are having the fourth episode of the four-part series on men's health. So you can share, you can invite your friends to watch because it may be about men, but it involves each and every one of us because we don't know tomorrow. So let me, let me come over to you. What is the prostate problem? What are they exactly? So there are quite a few prostate problems. And as we know, as Dr. Ako has said, the, the prostate gland, it surrounds the tube that carries urine out of the body. And it's very tiny. It's the size and shape of a walnut, but it tends to get bigger as we get older. And mm -hmm. because it becomes enlarged or swollen, it can cause different conditions. The first one is called the prostate enlargement, where the prostate becomes enlarged. And if the prostate is enlarged, and as we all know, it surrounds the tube that carries urine out of the body. So automatically, it now starts causing pressure on the urethra. And so now the prostate enlargement, is it, it's, it's common in, in older men above 50. And as statistics will say, one in three men above 50 will have prostate enlargement. But yeah. it's, it's not known what happens, why, why, why that happens, why that gets enlarged. But it just gets bigger as men get older. But the, the good news is, is it's not cancerous. It does not cause cancer and does not increase your risk of developing cancer. The second, I don't know if you want me to talk about the, the symptoms or the signs, or we'll come back to that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that later. If you just mentioned them. The second problem is prostatitis, which is also a condition that affects the prostate gland. And this one is caused by inflammation. And some of the inflammations can be caused by a bacterial infection. However, not all prostatitis are caused by a bacterial in infection or an, a bacteria. But it's more common in younger men as well, between the ages of 30 to 50. So unlike prostate enlargement, prostatitis affects younger men. And it's not necessarily going to cause cancer as well. So there are all things that affect the prostate gland, enlargement, inflammation, and with prostatitis, it can be treated with antibiotics. But unlike prostate enlargement, it goes away with time, within a, a week to a month, but some might take longer. And then obviously another problem with the prostate is the prostate cancer, which is the obvious one, which a lot of people know. But sometimes people can confuse this three. If they have a prostate enlargement or prostatitis, they might get scared and worried that they have cancer, but it's always good to check to know exactly what's happening in the prostate gland. So okay, we'll come to the fine Yeah, that's fine. So um Doc, would you like to, to touch on the signs and, and symptoms, maybe of BPH or? Yes. Um, as as Les, Les Riley said, you know, because of um, the vague knowledge that people have about these um, three, um, talking about inflammation or infection or enlargement or a cancer itself or prostate, um, it's difficult. People get confused with what's going on. And at the end of the day, you know, you have to go to diagnosis, which we'll talk about later. The, the symptoms could be, you know, uh, uh, they, could, they could be common, you know, because when, when we look at the symptoms of prostatitis, which is inflammation of the prostate gland or benign prostatic hyperplasia, hyperplasia is, um, um, and I want to say in prostatitis, in, in BPH, uh, as well as in prostate cancer, 
we have an enlargement. The term enlargement is common in all three of them. And this enlargement is what causes the symptoms because when this prostate gets bigger, you know, it begins to it begins to exert pressure on the organs around it. So it's going to exert pressure on the bladder. It's going to try to exert pressure on the urethra, which is within. As I said, the urethra runs from the bladder to the center of the prostate. So when the prostate is enlarging, it begins to exert pressure on that um, urethra. All right. And as a result, what, what goes through there? We have semen, we have fluid, we have semen and, and urine going through that urethra. That's why I'm, I'm repeating this. So we just begin to think about the symptoms ourselves. So if your <coughs> semen has to go through that urethra and when there's a prostatic problem, you know, you're already thinking about some stuff happening, right? For example, this urine leaking from, from one area like your bladder into the prostate. What is that it's leaking? And if this urine is infected, we're talking about infection. And if we if we have, we can, we're also talking about blood, if there's a problem. So you can have blood in your urine and it, it, it's coming out there. All right. Um, if there's, it's infected, I mean, inflamed, you might have some pain. So there is something specific about those symptoms. I'm talking about urine, you know, why it is prostatitis or it is the DPH, of course, benign prostatic hyperplasia. And in it, when I was in medical school, we, we had this change in, in the term. We should talk about it as benign prostatic hypertrophy. So it's no more called hypertrophy. It's not hypertrophied, it's hyperplasia, which is an abnormal increase in the number of cells. So these cells increase, the cells mm -hmm. proliferate, and they mm -hmm. can proliferate slowly, or they can proliferate very fast, making them mm -hmm. aggressive with a higher tendency towards metastasis. Don't be scared of the word. It's just a spread when they, when they increase with, from within the prostate gland. And the, the, this is, it's okay, that contain, but when they begin to spread from without their metast metastasizing to another part. Um, are you okay? There could be painful urination, which is dysuria. There could be blood in the urine, which is hematuria, you know, blood hema. Okay. Um, some people might find it difficult when, when, when like, when a man, I'm talking to, well, we have a panel here, but I want to be talking with Roland. Roland is going to resume what I'm talking about because we have the men with the poster right here. That was named Clara Lessy and, uh, and, and Clarice, uh, 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 you know, they will not know what we're talking about. But, you know, when we go there, if somebody has a prostate problem, see by a man and an uncle in the village, he stands there for about five minutes just to do what other men would do in 30 seconds. He finds it difficult to urinate. And so it's going to, the urine will start coming out. The stream is weak. The stream is weak and it's going to stop. Then there'll be terminal dribbling around the area of the penis. He tries to pee. It's difficult. There's hesitancy. He can't pee. <coughs> so these are really big problems. And then a man will pee frequently. We call it frequency. The number of times he pees every day. Or he might get mm -hmm. up late at night to pee more than two times late at night, which is nocturia, which is not usually common. And we're talking about symptoms. Yeah. These symptoms um, show up usually like in BPH, prostate cancer, um, after about about 50 years, 45 years, because it's, it's difficult to find these symptoms before 45, except if it is, as let's say, we'll tell you, except if it is in prostatitis, because you can have prostatitis mm -hmm. before the age of 45. But when we're talking mm -hmm. about BPH and prostate cancer, the symptoms mm -hmm. will be coming up, you know. And let me just mention that it is normal for men to have benign prostatic hyperplasia as they get older because that prostate gland, as I mentioned, gets bigger as we get older, as we age. Mm -hmm. By the age of mm -hmm. 80, it is nearly normal for any man to have BPH. We're not going to say, oh, this is, it just gets bigger. It hyperplasia. I mean, the, the number of cells increase. So that is about the urine, all right? Let's talk about the, the what about the semen? Now, uh, it is a pleasurable effect, you know, to ejaculate. Yeah, it's a pleasurable effect to ejaculate, but when it becomes painful, we're already talking about a component of the prostate. I will take, talk about type of sim sim symptomatology right there. And uh, painful uh, ejaculation uh, is, is, is a big issue in men who have a prostate problem. And this is pertaining to what? Like prostate cancer. 
all right? Um, it might be changed with age, or erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction as a prostate problem can occur, but it can also occur as a complication of treatment of a prostate problem like prostate cancer, which is erectile uh, dysfunction, all right? So the, the symptoms are really serious. I'm talking about the symptoms you find with the prostate problem. But let me go specifically to prostate cancer. We're talking about pain in the hips, pain in the loin, pain in the, in the pelvic area, back pain. And in the village, you hear about back pain. The old man who is finding it difficult to urinate, gets up to urinate all at night, screams when he's urinating, has serious back pain. We're talking about prostate cancer, especially when you associate this with systemic symptoms, like weight loss. You can have weight loss because cancer causes weight loss. You're going to watch weight loss and stuff like that. You know, so the symptoms are really many. Yeah, for somebody with a prostate problem, and the urine uh, is, is, is 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 that's why we, we are rising. I, I'm getting to that age right now. You no, know, I need to get out there and do those tests. You know, um, Roland, we know what I'm talking about. You know, we agree. We need to get out there and do those tests. You know, you, know, you, you tell your husbands, you tell your brothers, and the rest. We're going to come to risk factors, of course, when the time comes. Since we're talking about the symptoms, of which family history is a very important component as a risk factor. Um, so one, one together and check this thing before it gets out of hand. Yeah, thank you, Clarice. Okay, you're welcome. That's great, Doctor. And R Roland, do, do you have anything to add as far as the signs and symptoms are, are concerned? Well, uh, after listening to my dear sister and uh, Dr. Akko, I think uh, Dr. Akko has actually given us a full rundown of all the signs and symptoms. But at times, those uh, symptoms tend to be very tricky because in some cases, you may have ordinary uh, UTIs, which might also give you some of those symptoms. It, something might start triggering in your mind that, oh, it's kind of prostate cancer or some kind of prostate problems. But at times, that's maybe some ordinary urinary tract infection can also give us uh, fear in our mind. So sometimes the symptoms and the signs, they are actually sometimes very tricky. But the most important thing, like what Ako said, once we, we approach the age of um, us getting to that state, it's always advised that we go in for a test. There are a lot of tests out there. You can go in for prostate specific uh, antigen tests and other tests because you might be suffering from ordinary urinary tract infection and might be getting confused if it is a sign of uh, prostate problem or not. So the best thing we can do is just to go for a test once you start having those signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Th thank you so much. Let's see anything to add as far as signs and symptoms are concerned before we move to the next one. Um, I think Dr. Apple has pretty much touched everything. I'll just give a bit of tips. So I'll break it down for, for the prostate enlargement. I think Difficult is starting or stopping your ur urination. Hello, ur can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are, are you okay? Can you hear me? Are you okay? Are you okay, Roland? Yeah. Can you hear us, Roland? I think, I think his gone. connection is not too good. Yeah, let's yeah. just continue. Mm -hmm. So with the prostate enlargement, some of the signs are difficulty starting or stop stopping urinating a weak flow of urine so if the urine is the flow is very weak or you are straining to pee or you're feeling like you've not fully emptied your bladder there might be some of the signs of prostate enlargement or prolonged dribbling after you finish peeing so sometimes you pee and then you still continue to dribble after peeing or you're needing to pee more frequently or suddenly or you're waking up in the night to, to pee and some of the, the, the symptoms of the prostate enlargement are quite similar to that of prostate cancer, which is like needing like to pee more. The is breaking. I can't really feel out. I can't hear what you're saying. Are you, can you get me? Yes, I can get you. I can hear you. Can you hear me, Nola? Can you hear? Um, can you hear me, Rola? Am I, is everyone else hearing me? Yes, I can yes, hear we can hear yes. you. Mm -hmm. I can okay. hear you. So maybe I think he has, he has network problems. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it is his connection. Um. Yeah. 
Just continue because he's... So with the, with the prostate cancer, it's quite similar to prostate enlargement, which is rushing to the toilet, straining or taking long to pee and a weak flow of urine. Hello, can However, you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. I, I was talking, you. but in a, suddenly I discovered that I was talking to myself. No, we can hear you. No, we can hear you. We can, we can hear you, Roland. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Are you okay now? I think, oh, he's gone off. Okay. He's gone off. Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so right. we okay. did, with prostatitis, which affects men between the ages of 30 to 50, the signs mm -hmm. are a bit different from prostate enlargement and prostate cancer because with the prostatitis, you can have pain in the pelvis, the genitals, your lower back, and your buttocks, or pain where you're mm -hmm. urinating, or frequency, urinary frequency, difficulty urinating, such as starting to pee, or you, you might have painful ejaculation as well, and pain in the perineum area, which is the anus and the scrotum area. And mm -hmm. it, can, it might go on for a prolonged period of time. So Dr. Alko did touch a lot about this, but I just wanted to break it down with the different okay. problems and the symptoms that come with it. Okay. All right, thanks for that. So as from what I've, I've understood, are UTIs, STDs, and are they always related to the prostate problem? Yeah, because of the connectivity, because of the close proximity. You know, yeah. the, we mentioned, as you asked, as you, I, when I was trying to describe the prostate gland, I talked about those structures around them, talked about the bladder, you know, that very connected, interconnected. For example, if the bladder, if urine which is infected leaks into the prostate gland, we're going to have, mm -hmm. acute, uh, we can have bacteria which will infect the prostate gland, which will have bacteria prostatitis, which is a type of, um, um, a, a cause of um, prostate prostate gland and then if you try to use antibiotics you don't treat it it's not treatable and then it, it recurs we're talking about chronic bacterial prostatitis although there are other causes of prostatitis all right they were mm -hmm. talking about just leaking so where is the infected urine leaking from it's not leaking from the prostate it's leaking from another um, adjoining gland so the, those glands around and then uh, leslie talked about the perineum and all that stuff and you talk about inflammation around mm -hmm. there when talking about prostatitis. you see how linked they are the pelvis and everything. Yes, they are connected. They are very interconnected. Yes. And yes. 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 And just to add, yeah. let's imagine a situation we've already talked about the prostate gland being putting pressure on the on the re urethra, which is a tube that takes urine out of the body. Right. So in some okay. situation, if it gets very enlarged, it can it can block it. And imagine if it blocks it and you are unable to pass urine, then you yeah. go into urinary retention. And right. if it's not detected early, the urine in your bladder can lead mm -hmm. to an infection. Yeah. So under infection, you need to if you don't, you need to like catheterize the person to get the urine out. And in some cases, you need to put them on antibiotics because then it starts growing bacteria, which might be harmful to the body. Right. So yes, they are all connected and they are all linked together. Yeah. yeah. And you know, let's see, even the catheterization process can com can generate complications. Of course. And worsen the and worsen the already existing prostate problem. Yes, of and course, let's yeah. say that that's a very powerful one when you talk about you know the really retention when you talk about mm -hmm. it being blocked it has happened in some patients and so mm -hmm. it's a very it's a very crucial thing the prostate gland and yeah let, yeah and uh, you mentioned ac um, uh, at the beginning of the program you mentioned that men don't really like to talk about it but you know that's a funny thing because i wonder why men do not want to talk about something that is a huge problem for them as age, yeah, I don't believe I do not believe this should be one of those taboo topics like there are taboo topics like rape in a family. Yeah, that could be a taboo topic, difficult to talk about because we don't want Uncle Martin's name to be called because he raped his niece. Family doesn't want that; it could generate to issues of marriage in future and all that. We're Africans, you know, but this is a prostate issue among men, and we are we are susceptible to that. You know, men need to talk about it. Every man watching this program. Go and check your PSA, prostate specific antigen. Go if you are 45 years old. Or I'm going to check mine again uh, a month from now. Please go and check it. All right. You can do many things. Yes. Just to add to that, I, I, it, it's not just about the. Yes. 
one one second i i was actually going to going going to say or or, or to ask this is a, a health issue that affects you men but it affects almost should i say almost every man or most men we, we, why we, is it still a taboo topic we want to leave we want to why leave. why well, I want to come uh -huh. to that. I want to give you the answer. Let's see. Yes, let's see. Tell us. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> the, the thing is, it's not just prostate issues that men don't talk about. Generally, men don't talk. Men are very introvert when it comes to health related issues, whether it's mental health, whether it's cancer, whether whatever it is, they don't they don't really open up. But imagine yeah. the, it, it, just because of the, the embarrassment of some of the signs and the symptoms. Imagine calling your friend to say, Ah, Dr. Ako, do you know I dribble after I pee? You know? Mm -hmm. Or I get pain when I, because they'll start thinking the first to be like, oh, has he cheated on the wife or has he slept with somebody? Why is he having pain when urinating? Is it an STD? Is it this, you know? And then, you know, things like that might make them to be a bit skeptical about giving out the information. Oh, my pee, you know, when you're a little boy, you're young, your pee can go up and come down like a fountain. And then you start getting old and the thing cannot even go, you cannot even, <laughs> you know. Right. So they start feeling, it, it's just, it just comes about being, feeling embarrassed and feeling shy to open up to give. To tell them what is yeah. actually going on, what is say, oh, my pee is the flow is very weak, or I'm straining to pee, it's very painful, or it is kind of embarrassing. But right. we are here to encourage men to open up because you might be hiding something that 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 might be very detrimental in the long run by right. just feeling embarrassed. They need to open up. We women, we talk a lot. I'll call Clarice and say, yeah. Hey, Cla hey, something to me today, you know, say, you know, but men are not like that. They don't chat. No. They don't. You know, even when they chat, they don't go give details. Yeah. So it, it it's a mm -hmm. forum for us to encourage them to be able to to chat, yeah. to be able to talk. Even going to the GP or to the doctors, men don't. Doc, you're a doctor. I'm sure you are, most of your patients will be women. True or false? Yeah, that's a fact because uh, statistics, statistics have shown that you know men don't really. Men, you yeah. Know, yeah. Practice towards hospital care and attending appointments. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not like that of women. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and and that's one of the reasons why this this topic kind of is is still a taboo, a taboo mm -hmm. subject. People feel uncomfortable talking about it because they are Some counterparts. Of their friends will start asking questions: Where have you been? Where mm -hmm. did you go to? And who were you with? So mm -hmm. anyway, we we've talked about the 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 prostate gland. We've talked about yeah. the, the the signs and symptoms of the prostate problems. So can we go into the causes? What are really some of the things that cause this enlargement, this prost uh, prostatitis? I'm not medical, so I'm I'm, I'm also learning. So yeah. what what are the causes of all these problems? Yeah, you, so you, can you, we start with you? When you talk about causes, um, we're talking more about yeah. risk factors. Because yeah. when it comes okay. to the prostate, the etiology of the prostate, the etiology mm. of the prostate um, problems, which are could be infection, mm. inflammation, um, hyperplasia, which is abnormal um, increased number of cells, mm -hmm. or if it is cancer, which is an abnormal proliferation of cells, whether it's slow or fast, when it metastasizes. Mm. When it comes to that, we're talking about risk factors. There are certain risk factors. You know, uh, which would cause um, prostate problems. And I, I, I want to think about talk about like the prostate cancer, and then I'm also going to explore others. And um, of, I'll leave enough room um, for Leslie um, to interject um, and, and also to complement on this. You know, um, the, the most important risk factor is the age. Mm -hmm. Is the age because men who are, you know. Uh, above 65, other journals will say 55, uh, 50, that increased risk of having a prostate problem, which could be a BPH, but like prostate cancer. But men who are below 45 when it comes to BPH and benign prostatic hyperplasia or prostate cancer, there's a, a, a lesser risk, you know. So it, mm -hmm. as, we, as men age, as they get older, they are more susceptible to having a prostate problem. And that is a fact. So it should not be strange that when this man is getting, we should just be on the lookout for that. It should not come as a surprise. It is a fact. So we should work on this fact. Another important uh, risk factor um, is, um, you know, family history. You know, mm -hmm. yes, family history plays a very important role. If you have a brother, you have a son or a father who has a prostate problem, you have an increased risk of having a prostate problem as well. Okay, so be on the lookout for that. Check out that family mm -hmm. history. Look about look out for there for that. And 
another important risk factor, of course, is race. Race plays a role, okay? Yeah, so people ask me, are you, do, are you talking to me like this because I'm black? Yeah, we're talking about this problem because you're black. And you being black, especially African-American, you have an increase, you are easily susceptible to having prostate cancer. Yes, and compounded with, and I want to stay on this, um, on this, on, on this race. Yeah, you know, when out there, people are very sensitive. You don't talk about race, you are treating me. But when it comes to medicine, we are very specific about race because you're going to you're going to see someone from the Pacific or from the Caribbean. Uh, well, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it has a low risk factor. All right, we see this for documentation. We say this for um, proper and clinical documentation for interventions in future. So race compounded, we're talking about pre-existing conditions which exist among African Americans due to what? Another important risk factor of prostate cancer like obesity. Yeah, obesity has been found to be to have a crucial role, you know, um, increased fat. And this is where we start talking about the aggressive type of prostate cancer. All right. And talking about that lack of exercise, you know, which is also a risk, an important risk factor. Yeah, lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. Get out there, exercise. Yeah. When they say when we when it when we say we should exercise, a lot of people think it's just because you want to look good for yourself, for your husband, so that you're gonna look good on Instagram and everybody's gonna see your aging gracefully or you're not. It is more for health reasons. Mm -hmm. Because you talk about exercise and health, you talk about cancer from mm -hmm. breast cancer, let's see, let's see, we'll tell you the posted cancer to every type of cancer, exercise mm -hmm. is crucial. Mm -hmm. Get out there and walk and do something. We we'll talk about prevention of opposite cancer. Exercise is huge, so we, we cannot underplay that. All right, diet. What do you eat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you eat? What type of foods do you eat? Do you food, food, eat fruit and vegetables? Oh, I never like to hear that. You know, when I was about twenty five years old, thirty. Why should I eat fruits and veggies? Now it suddenly begins to make sense why I should eat fruits and veggies and why I am eating fruits and veggies and why I'm putting away all that Popeye's chicken, why I drive by the Popeye's store. I don't want to stop by Popeye's. I don't want to stop by that fried chicken because it has low density lipoprotein. It has all this fat and all that stuff. It's going to compound the problem. It's an important risk factor for prostate cancer. So you're really going to see that most of the risk factors for prostate cancer that I'm talking about, you have age. Uh, we cannot control that as you get older. There's nothing you can do. Family mm -hmm. history, nothing you can do. But you're talking about what? Yeah. Diet. You're talking about exercise. You're talking about stuff like that we can control. So we're talking about risk factors which you can control and risk factors which you cannot control. So mm -hmm. that there's a lot that we can do. And then we have genomic um, 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 factors and chromosomal factors which can also play an important role. And then in men, with a higher, I'll call one small term, you should not worry about that, uh, prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia, you know, PIN, PIN, um, men, uh, I mean, you know, PIN in men has found, has found to be an important risk factor as a positive factor for prostate cancer. BPH also has this, you know, BPH age over 50. For prostate cancer, the age is a little bit more advanced. So BPH is being less about over 50. For B, for prostate cancer, about over 65. The differences, of course, mm -hmm. we've talked about it, will, will be in the, in the diagnosis, yeah, and some clinical uh, symptoms that we, we mentioned prior. So we want to be cautious of, of, of that as well. Yes, I'm, I'm very sure that if there's anything else about the risk factors which there exist, um, yeah, let's see, can, can talk about that. Oh. Yes. Okay, thanks for that, Doc. Before we before I move over to Lacey to to add or mm -hmm. something else, uh, there's a question on from from one of our viewers. What about yeah. alcoholic con consumption? Does it increase susceptibility? Of course, uh, the alcohol increases. Alcohol does a lot of bad things in the body. You know, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I want to say. Because if we're talking about breast cancer, we're talking about lung cancer, we're talking about hepatic cell carcinoma, we're talking about cancers in the body. Right, this, the question will keep arising, and that question comes from B. Right, B, uh, IV, alcohol play. Uh, alcohol is a bad is a bad guy. All right, I mean, mm -hmm. I will talk about alcohol. We talk about people who drink. I'm not talking about those who take a glass of wine after a meal. That's cool. It's good for the heart. A glass of wine is good for the heart. I'm encouraging you to take a glass of wine. Do mm -hmm. not go and say Dr. Aku said you should drink a whole bottle of Menage a Trois, Menage a Trois for lunch every day. No, I didn't say that. All mm -hmm. right. Just a glass of wine is good for the heart. It's good for the heart. What's the size of the glass, dog? <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah. <laughs> a glass can mean yes. any. No, the sign of the glass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's just a trick question, you know. But you know, the glass of wine, the way we pour it in Africa, is not the way we pour it here in America. Or in Europe. Because the glass of wine, let me tell you how the glass, of course, you know, you, you hold a glass of wine from the stem, right? Mm -hmm. From the stem, you hold a glass. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a glass of a glass, an empty glass of wine here. Yeah. You hold it from That's the stem. And the reason why I hold it on the stem is because you pour just a little bit of wine in the glass so that it doesn't get all the way half. So that is how mm -hmm. a glass of wine should be. It's like a quarter of the glass, maximum one third. And if you can hold it on the stem, it's comfortable. But in Africa, we think a glass of wine is what you, you pour all the way to the top. And so you cannot hold it on the stem. And that's why we hold a glass of wine differently in Africa. We hold it from the glass itself. So that is not. <laughs> that is that is, it's good to clarify before people yeah. leave the program and go and drink buckets and say, oh, Dr. Yeah, so can drink. I, 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 you see, I'm still talking about the glass itself. The that's are smart. They can put this in a, that, you know, that pan wine glass which is big that we used to drink and wine in the village that our father used to see. So an African can take a whole bottle of menage a trois and pour it down you see him and drink. He says he's drinking a glass of wine. So let's not be smart here, all right? The glass of wine is the <laughs> of a glass of wine which you hold on the stem and sip and have lunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> so before we, we before we move into uh, onto the various forms of treatment or or management, let me, let me, let me just add something to the signs and the symptoms that Dr. Ako, even though he has mentioned, but as he said, with prostate enlargement, it comes with age. Uh -huh. It's inevitable. It, there's no cause yeah. for that. It's just something that happens with age. The genetic makeup as you age, the prostate glands begins to get enlarged. And then with prostatitis, even though it's mostly caused by an infection, but most often it might, you might still get prostatitis without having an infection. Right. And for prostate cancer, another risk factor is if, he's already mentioned if your dad had prostate cancer or brother had prostate issues. If you have a mom that has had breast cancer, as a male child, you are at high risk of developing prostate cancer. And if you are black or Caribbean or a mixed race, because they don't know whether the gene comes from the mom or the dad. So if you are mixed race, you're at higher risk and you are of black origin, of black or Caribbean, you're at a higher risk of having prostate cancer compared to white and right. Asians. Blacks are one, one in four black men who develop prostate cancer at some stage in their life compared to one in eight white or, right. or Asian men. So it probably, it might just be the genetic makeup as well, but it's not understood why. I think a, not, a lot of research still needs to go into that to ascertain why that happens. But for now, black men at the age of, if, if the thing is, if you have had a father or a brother who has had prostate cancer and you're a black man, or you've had a mom or an aunt who has had breast cancer and you are 45 years and above, you need to go for your PCA test because yeah. automatically you are at a higher risk. You need to get the PCA test done just to check. So you don't have to wait until you are 50 or 60 and above to get it checked. You need to check because your risk of developing prostate cancer is already higher. Right. Yeah, and one of the other risk factors is obesity. Obesity, as doctors say, we need to exercise, we need to eat healthy, but obesity is if your body mass index is above 30, you are obese. And that puts you at the higher risk of developing prostate cancer as well. Okay. Right. Oh, that's quite knowledgeable. Like I said, guys, we are learning and we are unlearning what we've known before. So you keep sharing and keep inviting your friends to watch and to learn. Our men, our boys, you need to know this. And us, the women, we also need to be aware. We also need to have this knowledge so we can also identify a problem. If and the women are struggling. The, the, the prostate of the men, because if it's enlarged and you don't take note, the man might be in trouble. So please keep an eye and check yes. for them. Because even if they notice mm. it, they might not want to go to the GP, so you need to push them to go. Yeah, and then there's something which is very important here, which you mentioned in terms of human behavior, you know. Yes. You mm -hmm. mentioned that men don't talk a lot, but women talk a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got you need to have your men to understand that you're not going to talk about that. no because, uh, yes 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm just. This is a main thing. I'm just trying to let you know. Yes, you know. yes. Yeah, <laughs> men, men don't like their stuff to be out there. You know, so mm -hmm. one of the reasons why the men want voice out because they don't want to talk about their stuff because it gets complicated. As you mentioned before, uh, prostatitis could reduce an infection, but the symptomatology yes. is similar yeah. to um, UTI, for STD. example. STI, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can reduce to gonorrhea, could reduce to yes. spleen, could reduce to Lisa, and, okay. mm -hmm. and then you could mm -hmm. have painful urination. That painful urination, you know, it's not a prostate thing, but because of an <laughs> UTI. So, if you talk a lot, <laughs> now, <laughs> you see, you're not a I'm just telling you. Don't say I didn't tell you. That's a good yeah. point, though. <laughs> but yeah. it, 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 it it's like, necessary when. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, I know Cham, Cham, Cham is watching. Cham is watching. Cham is watching. Cham is watching. I'm talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Bali, Bali, Bali Kool is also watching. Then yeah, Ivy, Bali cool. yeah, Bali cool. yeah, also yeah. watching. Bali, Bali cool yeah, like that topic. I know Bali, Bali would like that topic. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. they don't like that stuff to be out there, and you know they don't like to talk. That, maybe that's the reason why they don't talk about it. It's not out of love, but out of extreme caution. Because if the woman talks, before yeah. you know it, the whole neighborhood is going to understand that that man has an issue going on because the wife <laughs> or the girl. Yeah. So don't talk. Yeah, you know? obviously. <laughs> Obviously, but when when it comes to health issues like this one, it's necessary we we talk about. It's also necessary be, because if the man is suffering, we will also suffer, right? And, right, Lacey? Because if you are struggling yes. to, if you are in if that you, period, if, if you, you start you having painful ejaculation, Doctor Ako, and you yeah. don't want it, yeah, the woman will suffer too. I know. I, I will also suffer. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so if you tell us, you know, no, no, boss, I know. We're going, we're yeah. Talking, we're so it's about... good we know such things. <laughs> I get the point. I get the point. I get your point. The woman will suffer. Yeah, I get the point. They think, yeah. The woman will suffer because she has to wake up at night every time they, this man wakes up at night to pee. You know, because that's nocturia, which is a symptom. So he's going to Dr. wake up Ako, two, three times. Let's go to yes. something. Yeah, you're, you're deviating us from the topic. Let's then then. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It, it, it's good. It's good. I, I, it's good. I didn't say I didn't about waking up to go and pee in the night. I, I specifically emphasize on one of the symptoms. Don't take me to another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. It's good to have a good laugh, and at the same time, also also learning because yeah. the man suffers physically, the woman suffers emotionally, right? So yeah. <laughs> she, she may also suffer mentally. Even the man may also suffer mentally in the long run if this is not this is not treated. And so, to so our our next question, I think Lacey, you've you've already touched this. You've already mentioned this. If prostate cancer is uh, particular amongst certain race. The black, the black, yes, black, black, black and Afro-Caribbean men are at the higher risk of developing prostate cancer. One in four okay. black men are at the higher risk of developing prostate cancer at some stage in their lives. And it can mm -hmm. be below 50, to be honest. And what I did say was if your mom has had breast cancer or your aunt has mm -hmm. had breast cancer or a close relative, but especially if your dad, or brother has had prostate cancer as well, then your chances or your risk is very high of developing right. it. Okay. So you, that, you don't need to wait. You don't need to, be, to wait to, to be fifty or above sixty-five. You need to go for a PCA test. Yeah. Once you're forty-five, start okay. to go for that PCA. Go for yes, you go for the PCA mm -hmm. test once you are forty-five. Or if you are nearing forty-five and you start having some of these symptoms, you don't have to wait until you are forty-five. If you start having the symptoms even below forty-five. You have to go for the PCA test. Right. Okay. If yeah, if, if a blood may, test, may test where they detect their yeah, yeah, the prostate specific antigens in the blood. So okay. it's good to go and check, yeah. Uh -huh. Let's go back a, a, a little bit to prostatitis. Does mm -hmm. it come with age or can, can it affect any any male? Some of us have boys. Us no, have prostatitis boys and, and we have to have an so prostatitis is basically an inflammation of the prostate. It doesn't. It it affects younger men from thirty to fifty. Okay. So it, and it, it, it just yeah. is mostly caused by an infection. However, you might still have it without having an infection. 
So it doesn't come with age. It, it affects right. younger men as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's and, good. And I, you can have you can have a nerve damage in the lower urinary tract, right? A nerve damage mm -hmm. in the lower urinary tract, which could be from you know uh, a surgery or from a trauma. You know, any trauma mm -hmm. in the lower urinary tract can also cause you know an inflammation of the prostate gland. Just like yeah. actually rightly um, I mentioned, it's not just from inflammation a bacterial infection. I'd mentioned mm -hmm. prior that because of the interconnectivity, you know, the bladder, um, then you have the prostate gland, yeah. then you have the, the organs around the rectum, penis, and everything, um, you could have a leakage of urine into the prostate gland, infected urine, and you will have bacteria, which will infect mm -hmm. the prostate yeah. gland. Then you, you have acute bacterial mm -hmm. that could be, you know, managed with antibiotics. Now, mm -hmm. if you can't, you cannot be managed with antibiotics the right way, and then it still recurs again, you're going to be having chronic bacterial prostatitis. So yes, mm -hmm. but you also have now a motorcycle injury can yeah can inflame the prostate gland and cause prostatitis. Mm -hmm. A horseback injury, you know, mm -hmm. you're on the horseback and you know, do those things can, but it, anything that causes nerve damage in the lower urinary tract can cause. Even riding a bicycle as well can cause the prostate yeah. to be alive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. Mm -hmm. So this actually leads me to a question which I didn't which I didn't really plan for. So I can a prostate problem or an inflammation or an infection of the prostate lead to infertility? Can it affect? Yes. Yes. The relationship. It can. it can because when you talk about erectile dysfunction. Right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it, it, it just tells you everything. It's erectile dysfunction okay. and it causes little infertility. Yes, because mm -hmm. that is symptomatology. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, can a painful ejaculation cause little infertility? Yes, because mm -hmm. if a man finds it difficult to ejaculate, then he will not want to ejaculate anymore. Uh, and is mm -hmm. the whole genesis if an ejaculation has to will lead to what bring out sperm load, which is important for fertilization. So yes, a prostate mm -hmm. problem. That, so that, that can lead to a prostate problem. But although if well okay. managed, yes, those, those are the, the, the we, we can just detect it from the symptomatology. You talk about yeah. Okay. So, but the, 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 the prostate gland it produces thick white fluid that gets mixed with sperms to create semen. Right. So if the prostate gland is affected or if it, it has a malfunction or a defect then automatically it might not be able to produce that thick white fluid that can get mixed with sperms to humans. So, and if there's no, the sperms yeah. travel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, wow. it can. Little infertility, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Thanks for that. Guys, there's a lot of learning today. Keep inviting your friends to, to watch. I am learning today, and I'm going to leave this show today a different person. Same as, as you guys. So we've talked about the prostate problems. We've talked about the risk factors, talked about signs and symptoms. So we can actually move into what to do. What can you do? Management, treatment. So let's see, can, can I start with you? Yes. So How do they take care of? How can it be treated? But whether it is inflammation or it so is infection or the cancer itself. So what we've already, happened? I think in the course of the discussion, we've already mentioned treatment options anyway. So for, for prostate mm -hmm. enlargement, there's actually no treatment for that. It goes okay. with time, it just, or it just stays there. But it's, it's not painful, it's, it's just benign, it's just enlarged. Prostatitis, mm -hmm. as we've said, and doctor has affirmed, we use antibiotics for that. But okay. with the prostate cancer, we can use chemotherapy, we can use radiotherapy, and there are different treatment options. However, with the prostate cancer, the doctors are very cautious about jumping into chemotherapy or other treatment. You can have surgery to remove the prostate gland as well. But they're very mm -hmm. cautious to jump into chemo, especially if it's, if it's not causing you so much problem, if, they, if, if it's manageable. Because we also have to weigh the, 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 the pros and the cons of jumping into chemotherapy or some radical treatment, mm -hmm. you know, but if, if, if you are a man and you are maybe in your 70s, 80s, or 90s, and you have prostate problem, and it's not causing you an overwhelming problem or issues, why would you jump to give somebody chemotherapy? Chemotherapy in itself is very hard. It's something that you need to be fit to be able to, to, to stand it. But there, yeah. there are treatment options, but most of the treatment options, they have to 
weigh the pros and the cons and see if you really need it or if if you can they can go symptom management or they can manage it without giving you radical treatment. So I'm sure Doc will add more to that. Yes, and let's see what you're saying yes. is, quite, is quite true because um, when it comes to the management of prostate cancer, it, it is it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. right? um, having having a combination of the symptoms and the you know the diagnosis will give you an idea already, but there are still things which are very specific. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, they have carried out this, they have done the digital rectal examination, which is inserting a gloved and lubricated mm -hmm. finger uh, into, you know, you know, the direction in such a way that you, you want to define the contours of that prostate gland all the way to the mm -hmm. back. It might not be enough because the, some of the of, of that of that gland could be hidden all the way to the back. You want to continue with, you know, uh, a PSA specific process specific mm -hmm. antigen in the blood to determine whether the value is from zero to two point five nanograms per mil. So if this mm -hmm. value is above. 2.5 milli nanograms per mil, you start becoming suspicious. Although mm -hmm. there are people, 15% tests, yeah. uh, tests have shown that 15% of, of individuals um, um, with prostate cancer have a normal PSA. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah, so yes, not, yeah. yeah. It does not imply that um, if your PSA is normal, you do not have prostate cancer. So that's what I want yeah. to say to me right here. So that is yeah. why you, know, you, you see you, you have to work with the doctor all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, having yeah. said that, um, when we notice that this PSA is high and they were talking about back pain, those are giveaways for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, back pain, you talked about mm -hmm. uh, pain on the hips and stuff like that. Um, are you weight loss, you know? And those systemic doctors will look for those the signs of cancer because prostate yeah. cancer is a cancer. And in addition to all that, then they begin to have an idea on what to do. But even even that is still, you start looking at treatment mortalities. You know, is it going to be surgery? Is it going to be hormonal therapy to stop the growth? Because I mentioned prior that the reason why you when you ask me to talk about prostate gland. And uh, before I delve into it, is it being a walnut sized gland? I mentioned that um, there yeah. are androgens, which are male hormones in the body, you know, which produce mm -hmm. which produce prostate gland. That hormonal therapy wants to be targeted at arresting the growth um, of these hormones in the body so that it does not cause the proliferation of the gland. So, mm -hmm. you, is it hormonal therapy you want to do? Do you want to do chemotherapy? Do you want to do immunotherapy? Do you want to do external or internal beam? radiation therapy, it all depends on that individual, what is going yeah. on. It depends that quite specific, you know, and it leaves a, 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 a huge um, um, a mindset for consciousness. That's why you need a, a multidisciplinary team to manage an individual at a specific time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're talking about um, an oncologist, uh, 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 you know, we're yeah. talking about a radiation ecologist, we're talking about some chemotherapy. We're talking about uh, a surgeon. We're talking about a urology. Team of, a, it's, it's a whole multi multidisciplinary team. We're not going to have one person trying to figure out it. And this is quite sad. The treatment of in, in Africa, we 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 still we're trying to work on having that multidisciplinary team on ground and making it more efficient. Yeah, we already have mm -hmm. um, great hospitals where they they have they, they treat cancer very well in Africa, but we could. We could do better on that, unlike in, in countries like, you know, in the United States or in Italy and other areas where these multidisciplinary teams are right there to ensure that they, they do what they have to do. Now, one thing I've noticed is a lot of people's minds are towards chemotherapy, especially those who, of us who come from Africa. But you're going to do chemotherapy if if this this cancer has metastasized in another part of the body. You're going to do chemotherapy if hormone therapy is not it's not efficient, you know. We don't just delve into chemotherapy like that. Furthermore, why are we going to start treating, all right, if this cancer is not aggressive, if it is not exactly. a metastasized? No, exactly. you don't want to rush and treat because the side effects yeah. of chemotherapy are very important. Yeah, 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 they're important. So we want to work with our doctor, your primary care physician. We want to work with your primary care physician. We want to work with your with your doctors all the time. Carry out the checks, as we said carry out this test and keep keep going there and you know there, there, there's going to be some surveillance they're going to watch what is going on and they'll, they'll be they'll be informing you instead of you trying to inform yourself if you don't get out of your doctor yeah mm -hmm. and one of the things as well with prostate cancer is that the outlook for prostate cancer is generally good 
unlike many other cancers. So right. most men, they, they, they die with prostate cancer rather than die as a result of prostate cancer, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it progresses mm -hmm. very slowly. Okay. So something else will kill you and not the cancer itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But treatment is only treating if 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 it, if it gets worse, if the symptoms are really unbearable. However, in, in that case they'll, they'll treat it but most often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Okay. So is it would yeah. that be in this case where they, they 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 have to observe the watch and wait or the surveillance? Because I know yeah. in, in in my area yeah. of, of work as a data validator, we do look at patient pathways and, and at time the patient has to be monitored yeah, over the time before they do. Yes. Is that what yeah. is that what happens? Yes, yeah, is is that, yeah. we're talking happens. about watchful surveillance, right? Yeah, yeah. you don't want to yes. watch and treat. Yeah. Yeah. As as Leslie mentioned, this is not we don't want to rush and treat prostate yeah. cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what should surveillance will, will be, you, you go to your doctor and then he's going to explain to you the course to follow. You know, we're going to do mm -hmm. every three to six months you, you're going to do a prostate specific antigen, a PSA, mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. to six months. Then every year mm -hmm. you're going to do a, 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 a biopsy. You know, you want to do yeah. a DRE. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, we're going to do a DRA, digital rectal examination, which I'm sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. every three right. to six months. Yes. Are they going to do a biopsy, you know, uh, within a particular time frame, like um, six months, 12 months, okay? And then after, what was the next one to be about two to five years? They keep monitoring that and making yeah. sure that everything is fine. That is the work, that is, that is the surveillance, you know? You don't just want to rush and go over yeah. there and treat yourself because out of fear, some people will be like, I want to get rid of this at once. You know, it is not like any other type of cancer. This thing is among men and it just, it goes on, all right? And then mm -hmm. you discover that um, the, you, despite the treatment, the PSA still shoots up. Mm -hmm. It goes up there. It's, it's high. It just shows you that it's, 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 it's recovering or is it metastasizing to another part of the body? It's still there. That is when you see talk to your, onco um, your oncologist or your team and they're going to, they can advise you at one stage or on another on what to do. And what they mm -hmm. advise A is not what they advise B. So we're not going to, act, let's, for example, let's and I can sit here and tell you that this is what you need to do and then somebody else goes and applies it doesn't work. For you. There's no one rule fits all. Yeah. There's, there's, that, that okay. one there's no one rule fits all, yeah. All right, that, that, that brings me to uh, still on this watch and wait or this um, surveillance. Is it not a risk? Is it not risky while the patient is waiting? Don't you think that if the the cancer can metastasize? Uh, watchful waiting. When we come to waiting, uh -huh. watchful waiting. We are talking about yeah. older men where we we'll have about about five days to live. Yeah. Uh -huh. So watchful waiting is like. You know, for what we talk about surveillance, we talked about the whole process. Now we talk about watchful waiting. It's for for men. You know, we, we have about you know five years to live, and we get to that point, all right, because we have the team has exhausted many many outcomes, many possibilities. Yeah, so that is because you mentioned the term watchful waiting. Yeah, we will not we not, we'll not yeah we we'll, we'll, we'll use them um, surveillance. You know. For those so, which the spread is slow, it's not aggressive, has no metastasis, we believe that um, you can carry on doing this test for us. We can know exactly what's going on. Yes. So okay. So one of the things as well with the watchful waiting, just to add to what doctor has said, is as he says, a lot of these men are not are not young. By the time you have prostate no cancer, right, right, because it grows very slowly. By the time it gets to the point where you need treatment, you probably maybe be around eighty or ninety. And by the time you get to that age, you already have a lot of other comorbidities, mm -hmm. other underlying symptoms. Yeah. Maybe you have hypertension, you have stroke, you have a pacemaker, you have cardiac issue, you are diabetic. So the way all the mm -hmm. options, is it is it necessary? Is it what is the best option for the patient? Is a patient center approach? What is the best option with all these mm -hmm. comorbidities? Is chemotherapy worth it? Is surgery, would, would this patient's heart be able to stand the surgery if we do the surgery just to treat the prostate? But in most cases, even the patients will tell you they don't want any invasive intervention. They'll, they'll decline. They'll say, no, 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 I don't want it. Let me spend this time and enjoy my family and live my life. I don't want to go under the knife at this age. I don't want any chemotherapy. I don't want any harsh treatment. So it, most often, they just monitor them, manage the symptoms, and yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. 
So we've thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, Lovelyn, Vali, Ivy, and Jam. Thank you so much for being here and your questions. Um, one person asked if diagnosed early enough, can it be treated? Which I think we've already talked about that, yeah. Dr. Aku. Yeah. Yes. All right, that's that's fine. And so we've been on live here for about one hour, 10 minutes. We will soon be rounding up, but is there anything that can be done to, to reduce the chances of prostate problems or prostate cancer? Yes. Um, let, what you, you can see. It's, you're talking about prevention here, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Prevention, yeah. We talked we talked about risk factors, which we can do nothing mm -hmm. about, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of you're going to get older, the pussy is going to get, yeah. get larger, and nothing you can do about that, all right? It means you're going to get mm -hmm. to that red room, red room more often, you might have this fever, I think, fever nation, you have, there's nothing to do about that. You might have a relative in the mm -hmm. family who had, yeah. you know, we talked about like those important relatives, like the father, the brother, the son, and then you have uncles, nephews, and the rest. Now, that's family history. There's little or nothing you can do about that. But there's something you can do about these other risk factors. We're talking about okay. diet. Yeah, what you eat, that's what you put in your mouth is important. Fatty foods. Mm -hmm. And that's the ones who only this aggressive type. What can you do about it? Yes. Eat well. You are a man, and you have, a, you know, someone in the family who has family history. Your only thing is, the, your only um, option is not just to visit a doctor and ask questions. Eat well, eat right, all right? The fat. You have a family history of obesity, watch it. Because if you're a male and you have a family history of obesity, now that is that's serious. And it's not just for prostate cancer, it's for many other things. Mm -hmm. and disease, and mm -hmm. process and all that stuff. So obesity is important, mm -hmm. all right? Obesity. And then your lifestyle. I, mm -hmm. I would call it diet and lifestyle. We have many diet and lifestyle coaches, and not just women, because folks think that women need diet and lifestyle coaches more than men. Now, this is one area, and the men need this. So you need to talk to a diet and lifestyle coach, because prostate cancer and BTH are no joke. You know, we're jumping around, doing stuff. I'm doing Yangi Nation, I'm doing my stuff. There's going to come a time in my mm -hmm. life when I, I need to really watch it. I can't jump around like that because I I, 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 I could if I want to, but I need to focus on on that. What do I eat? What is my lifestyle? Do I go to the gym? Do I jog? Do I exercise? You know, do I exercise? I, I just want to mention that by the age of 40, exercising is not for fun. Exercising is important, like, you know, putting money in the bank and saving money for the future. Exercising is mm -hmm. saving for the future. You know, exercising is not just a joke. It's saving for the future. Wise and smart people exercise for the future. They don't exercise because their friend is exercising, because they want to look good. That's not it. It is saving for the future. It's a health bank right there. Mm, so we need yeah. to get out there and exercise. Apply yourself to exercise. You're not impressing anybody. It's for your health yeah. reasons, you know. It's going to take care of many types of, of, of cancers or disease and stuff. Obesity, diet, eat well, veggies and fruits. I like to eat my fufu and eru. But I want to make sure that my eru does not contain too much oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. It took us a while to figure that out. Too much oil does not. Low density, low density lipoprotein is no joke because it affects the heart, clots, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. You want to make sure that you eat mm -hmm. right. You want to include vegetables and fruits. We're talking about prevention of cancer right here. We're talking about prevention of uh, and stuff like I want to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. And then the timing of your eating. When do you eat fufu? You eating fufu at 10 o'clock, at 10 p.m.? You, you, you have to watch it. You, you can eat nice. around 10. So diet. I'm talking because I'm talking to an African audience mainly. Because I'm, so I'm straight to the point. You can't be eating all that fufu, yeah. all those plantain, and all that stuff at 9 p.m. 8 p.m. after a long day at work and they go to sleep. You want to eat that around 12 so that you are active, not when you're sedentary. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you want to be wise the way you eat. And then, I mean, that is a lot about preventing this stuff. We've talked about early diagnosis. We've talked about um, hospital visits, you know, your primary care physician. We've talked about, you know, you, 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 you ask for it. I want to find out what my PSA is. Nobody's going to tell you no when you're 35 years old or when you're 40 years old. They can tell you to not check the PSA. Insist on a digital rectal examination. Yeah. yeah. Insist on that doctor putting that gloved, lubricated 
finger in your rectum to figure out the contours of your <laughs> glands. For it, for me, it insists on that, man. All right, yeah. so it's, it makes some men feel uncomfortable. They don't like such tests, but it's important for your health, knowledge, attitude, and practice of prostate health, uh, cancer, and abnormalities is very important for men. Yeah, that that, that is what I would I would mention by name. <laughs> Right, thank you. And Lacey, over to you. Do you have anything to add concerning prevention? Well, I think doctor has basically touched everything, but I just want to emphasize on the point of it, 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 it has to be a proactive decision. It has to be lifetime choices. If you want to mm -hmm. live 100 years and be healthy, you have to start making those decisions now. Because I hear a lot of people say, if sick, no kill me, so other thing will kill me. <laughs> and and, and, and I, Exactly. And, and they eat and eat and eat. Some people, they live to eat. They don't eat to live. Whatever they see, they eat. We have to ask ourselves, how is this food I'm eating? What are the effects on my body? How is it going to affect my organs? What is it going to do if I eat it? We are not saying don't eat it, but mind the quantity you eat. How much are you eating? How much oil do you put in your arrow? A chow soup is basically a lot of palm oil. We're not saying don't eat it, but mind how you eat it and if you can come off a lot of cups as well is very necessary exercise as well is very good 30 minutes of exercise a day it, it's fabulous we're not saying exercise for, for two hours a day just a little bit 30 minutes if you cannot if you cannot jog if you cannot run 30 minutes of brisk walking is fine lots of vegetable and lots of fruits and less of cups and and fats is good so it's just about lifestyle choices, lifestyle changes, and be intentional. Just live an intentional life. You want to be healthy? Everything comes with a price tag. That slim girl you are seeing, she's exercising. She's minding what she's eating. So set goals, set targets, and go for it. Health is wealth. If you have all the money in the world and you don't have good health, how are you going to enjoy it? And a lot of these sicknesses they, they, they is because of obesity and what we eat. So we just have to be intentional. We have to be mindful. And we have to determine if you want to be 100, start taking those steps now to get to 100. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to add. Well, so thank you so much, guys. So don't, any other thing? We just Let's just round up. If you have yeah. any advice to our guys out there and... So, so, so we round up. Um, ju just for your information, guys, Dr. Ako is an artist, and he has this number one song that came out in on came out on the third of July, and it's called Kolofata. So it's a medical doctor who went who went to save patients in Kolofata, at uh, COVID patients, and ended up dying. But it, it's it's kind of tricky because it, it's like a, a um. A love movie, <laughs> yeah. a romantic movie, romantic song. So, yeah. Dr. Ako, any any last thing you want to tell our guests? They will give just about one minute to listen to your song. Then before we go, any oh, that would be great. Uh, it's just so fine. Fine. Um, I just wanted to mention that and since we've talked about proceed, and I'm asked to say one thing: you need to be happy out there. Okay, you need to be happy. You know, um, you should try to stop existing. And start living. That is something I learned from Michael Jackson's work. You know, when he, mm -hmm. in his song "Heal the World," you know, um, I'm I'm first an artist before I'm a scientist. Anything I do is art. I practice medicine because of my awareness of art. I interact with people because of my awareness of art. I can organize my schedule and do well in medicine and music because of art. You know, my humanitarian efforts all over the world. Um, when I used to do global ministry in Haiti, in Cote d'Ivoire, it's because of art. We should be happy. Yeah, it's something that you you can decide to do. We're living through a very tough time, especially us Cameroonians, with with what is going back home. Um, you know, initially it was a Boko Haram, then um, we have this um, Ambazonia thing going on, and then now we're having coronavirus. You need to get dig dig deep inside and decide to be happy. And then you're going to create all other ways to be happy. And this is what this is the biggest thing I really want to tell people. When you do that, then you're able to rise above and conquer many things that happen. It's not as if you're not going to have adversity, just because you've, you have understood how to deal with those 
occurring and reoccurring adversities every day in, in life and in society. Try to be happy. And AC, I want to really thank you for um, this uh, four-part series. For me, it helped me a lot. When I sat back and watched the videos, um, I was privileged to meet gentlemen you know, from Cham to the rest on this on this platform today. I'm privileged to be with yeah. uh, Lessie. Unfortunately, Roland had um, some technical difficulties. Um, I meet people yeah. from France, from the United Kingdom. That is what life is all about. You sit there, you talk about viral issues, and you keep building a community of people. For me, life suddenly has a meaning when you can share information and things with people. Being an artist for me is a great privilege. You know, I write songs for Nigerian artists, for Zambian artists. I am producing an artist from Zambia already, uh, that young post in Cameroon. That gives me meaning in life, you know. And I also thank God for the grace and the privilege for us to do all these things. I appreciate my family, my wife, Cynthia, who gives me a very strong backing, and my son, Calvin, and, and all the relatives that we try to help um, through school and the rest. And I want to thank you for this privilege. Uh, AC, I'm looking forward to the next big topic, you know. I'm your doctor, Dr. Ako, your artist, Yangi, and we are in the game, and we're doing good. Bye. And we are together in the game. Thank you. And okay. let's see, over to you. Thank you so much for, for, for honoring our invite. Over to you. Any final words, advice to our men, to our women out there? Yes. What I want to say is um, a lot of people, to all the viewers who are watching us, we are not here for a show. We are not here to just show our beautiful faces. We are here to raise awareness. Awareness is key, it's very crucial. Ignorance kills. A lot of people have died because they didn't know what we are sharing today in these platforms. We come here to talk about vital things, critical issues, health-related challenges that people need to learn and take it seriously. There are some signs and some symptoms that we've discussed, and if anybody is watching and has any of them, Please don't delay, go to your doctor, get checked. Most often it might not be what you are thinking it is, but it's good to catch it early. If whatever it is, it's good to catch it early because early detection is key. So we don't want to scare you. We don't want to put fear into you. We are here to raise awareness, to educate the masses and to tell you that ignorance is bad. A lot of people have died because they didn't know what we are, we are sharing on these platforms today. So please, if you are watching, if you know anybody who has symptoms, if you know anybody who is struggling with something, please advise them to get checked. And that's my final word. Thank you all for Thank watching. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much, guys. And yeah, health is wealth. And happiness comes within us. Each and every one of us, we have to strive to be happy, irrespective of what we are going through. Because every person out there has a silent battle they are fighting. It may be a prostate problem. It may be a mental problem as a result of a prostate problem. There are so many people suffering out there. And at the same time, we need to give a voice to some of these issues that we are facing. Because I still say, and I always like to say, what we give a voice to has the power to change and heal us and also heal others. So, if you are that person who has been sitting there struggling to urinate or struggling to ejaculate and, 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 and feeling shy, being ashamed to go and see your doctor to mention or to mention it even to, to, the, to the closest person to you who could be your wife or your girlfriend, it's time to open up. Because as Lacey says, early detection is key. Early detection leads to early intervention and early treatment. And so we are going to round up today and we are going to announce our next topic in the days ahead. But before we go, I'd like to acknowledge Valley Cool for me for watching, Cham for me for watching. I will be, I appreciate your support. Bia Fangui, Lovelyn, I appreciate you all. And Roland, it's been it's sad that we didn't have you right till the end of the show, but we are grateful that we had you for the first half of the show. Dr. Ako, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Yes, virtually. And I know someday we will all sit in a big room and talk and give a voice to all these 
things we are facing. Lacey, I'm really, really grateful for your input and all your advice and everything you, you did before the show started. And for, for your information, the Paco, so many people know that Lacey and myself, we look alike. They know that we are sisters. Even on Facebook, sometimes I, I get tapped on her picture. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes if my... I, I was for real, I was coming to that. You just look alike. Are you sisters? I was about asking that, you know. You look we need to yeah, ask yeah. our father, so we don't. We need to ask our fathers. We don't know where they, how far they went. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see when, my when I'm, coming, when I'm coming, we to need to. UK, when I'm coming to the UK, right? When I'm coming to the UK, um, you need to put a a tag on your that I am. I am. Okay, we'll, we'll send you pictures. How we are dressed? So that, okay. <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And. Yeah. yeah, and guys, if you, you've noticed, the name of our show changed from the Stanley Show to the Voice of Hope Show. The voice we give here is a voice of hope. It's a voice that will give you hope. It's a voice that will educate, will empower, and will inspire you through raising awareness, through talking about these issues or these problems which most people do not want to talk about them. So we give a voice to them. So as to be able to seek help, get healing, and to help change a life out there. So it's a happy new month to everyone. And thank you once more for watching. If you have any questions which you didn't put here, Dr. Akwe is available for you to send questions to. Lessie is available because they are the medical people here. So they are available and they can answer your questions. And direct you to the right places for help. If you have a problem, prostate problem, don't be quiet, don't be silent. Silence will go out there, seek help, speak to your doctor, speak to your close ones and get help because prostate problems have a treatment. They can be treated if detected early. Thank you once more for watching and have a good evening, everyone. And we will talk next week. Bye. Bye. Music. <laughs>